Who needs a fancy waterfront office in Dubai or San Francisco when you can enjoy lake view and waterfall view right here mid meeting yep Bangalore's tech parks have unlocked swimming pools and waterfall aesthetics courtesy well bad town planning now the jokes aside it's high time we reflect on how city once known for its idyllic lakes and cool climate became a place where streets turn into rivers and tech parks into pools after the lightest downpour the biggest question is why does bengaluru drown every time it rains news 9 plus decodes here's the brutal truth that everybody knows but doesn't want to accept most part of the city were built on lakes and it is these lakes that are taking their rightful place every time it rains for instance parts of nagwara lake it's now manyata tech park yelanka lake that's where kendriya vihar apartment stands the uttar halli area was once sunkalpalya lake the vartur lake is a bustling suburb now which goes by the name vartur once upon a time the britishers called bengaluru the land of thousand lakes now we've just got 81 left and just 17 are in good shape the others dried up built over or reduced to sewage pits progress has cost us dearly and over the years bengaluru's lake once its life blood have been buried under real estate and infrastructure so every time it pours the city hits the panic button rainwater has nowhere to go it's trapped under concrete jungles and clogged drains and boom roads turn into rivers and your uber ride suddenly needs a boat option who is responsible for this mess on social media it's easy to get caught up in a blame game arguing about which government is responsible for bengaluru's mess the sad truth is every government past and present is accountable whether through reckless urban planning turning a blind eye or pursuing vested interest they've all had hands in the city's decline successive administrations allowed lakes to be encroached upon storm water drains to choke and unchecked development to thrive and now the situation has spiraled beyond control because you can't magically bring back the lakes that are buried under the concrete it's no longer about who's to blame but how we collectively let bengaluru slip into this crisis the question is when will we stop pointing fingers and start finding real solutions so what is the way forward for bengaluru can we bring the lakes back well not unless we plan to bulldoze tech parks and apartment complexes uproot the lakhs of people who stay there so what's the solution work with what we have bengaluru civic bodies are now scrambling to revive the lakes they can funneling treated water into them and praying for rains to fill the rest maybe we can't reverse the past but we can avoid repeating it it's a time we work around the problem better rainwater management smarter urban planning looking for innovative ways to restore the rainwater and yes keeping those remaining lakes alive while the government in power talks about brand bengaluru what kind of brand are we building if we can't solve the city's fundamental problems every summer the city dries up and every time it rains it drowns this uncertainty this fragile balance will eventually collapse and it won't just destroy the city but take its people down with it development is essential but it cannot come at the cost of our environment and future if bengaluru is truly becoming a global brand it must start by securing its clean waters flood management and sustainable growth anything less and we will be left selling the ruins of what was once a dream city